Hello, good morning, good morning, everyone. Good morning to you, or if you are here for the first time on my channel, please don't forget to share the video. If you are on YouTube watching me, uh, hit on the notification button as well as subscribe to my YouTube channel. If these are some of the topics you like to hear on Founder Show, I bring you everything, including immigration news, as well as how to live in Canada in a much comfortable way, how you can learn from those who came before you, how to claim certain benefits is what we're going to talk about today. I have a gentleman here who has been accountant in our community for the, uh, I don't know, decade, has helped a lot of people. So today we're going to talk about money, 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 money. I would ask that you share the video and also just put it on any platform. If you have not yet subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so as we go through this channel. And we're just going to wait for you to invite somebody. Have you just arrived in Canada? Are you a new immigrant? Did you claim refugee beginning of this year, in the middle of this year? Or are you a student? Find out on this show, what do Canada Revenue owes you? Good morning, good morning again. Uh, this is Fahundi Hotspot Show. Today I have uh, Mr. Ni Odui, Professor Ni Odui. Uh, he's an accountant. He also teaches uh, what statistics or math, uh, accounting, some sort at uh, the universities here in Canada, uh, mainly in Humber College. Uh, so I'm going to ask him to introduce himself to you. But if you're here for the first time, please share the video. Also subscribe to my YouTube channel. And let's get in. Welcome, uh, Prof. Odui. Well, thank you, Mavis, and thank you for your for inviting me today. I'm happy to be here. Um, a very good uh, morning to all your listeners. And I'm excited to be here. I know you've been trying to track me down, but... This morning, I tried to make myself available to you. So I'm happy to be here to share some few words with your listeners. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much, very much. Godfrey, uh, Emmanuel, welcome. Please share the video, like I said. Today, we're going to talk about a lot of things. So if today's your first time on my page, uh, these are some of the topics we treat. We live in Canada. Uh, there's been a lot of people here in the country uh, there's, there's also a lot of things here in a country that people can are entitled to. Uh, you may not know. There's, we've missed, as a community in Canada, we've missed a whole lot of opportunity. It seems now that the young folks has gotten it. They've got it, how to live in Canada. There's a lot of com growth within the com Ghanaian community, within the African community. Why? Because we are now learning new. Listen, I've been here over 30 years, and I'm now learning a whole lot of things. And Odue, I probably say, Odue and I are probably almost the same age, or I'm older than Odue. But if I tell you what these people have done in this country, it is a mind-blowing, it is encouraging for you, a newcomer, a new immigrant, a student who is in this country for you to learn from these folks. So welcome again, uh, Mr. New Odu. I'm just going to uh, just leave it up to you uh, to let us know what year are we in right now and what should pe people should prepare for in terms of benefits. I'm talking about tax purposes. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about purchasing homes. I'm, I'm talking about how to live here debt free without any hassle, not owing the Revenue Canada, a whole bunch of things that a lot of people has messed up on when it comes to taxes. So, Mr. Niodwe, what do you think as a student, someone who uh, maybe entered the country beginning of 2022, mm -hmm. or better yet, 2023, as the year is wrapping up, 
What do you think a student should prepare themselves with? Okay, well, thank you again. Um, in Canada here, as you know, and especially in Ontario, we always say that it's yours to discover. Um, there are so many things hidden in the tax um, system that a lot of people don't know. Unfortunately, it's, these things are not even taught in schools. And so for this morning, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to share with your viewers some of these things. As a student, like the question you asked, as a student, you are entitled to so many benefits. Uh, for instance, um, by filing your tax, one of the first things you get, it's not only by getting a tax credit I mean, or a refund that makes people excited, but you're actually building what we call your RSP contribution room. You're also building what we call your tax-free savings room. Now, those rooms are very important for you so that when you uh, grow up and you want to save money tax-free, you use those rooms to contribute money um, tax-free. Now, of course, there's also the uh, GST tax credit that you get. There's what we call the um, currently, you know, due to pollution and all that, the government gave the, uh, uh, the benefits that deals with, you know, the credit that they are giving for pollution and all that. Uh, it's called the Climate Action Incentive Plan. Um, it's about five hundred dollars that you can get uh, once you file your tax. You also get what we call the sales tax credit. So even by filing zeros, um, once you have a social insurance number and you haven't even worked as a student, um, once you pay tuition, you are entitled to tuition credits, which you'll be getting. Um, you know, um, um, once you start working, you get that refund um, as a tax credit. But to answer your question, few things that you get off the back without doing nothing is HST GST tax credit. If you're not working, you'll get approximately close to $300 free. You're going to get sales tax credit close to $400 free, and you get the um, the, uh, the initiative that I just mentioned um, mm -hmm. free as well. So that's about $400. So about $1,000 that you're getting free. And, and and so even the GST, HST is given to you quarterly, which is about $80 every three months. So as students, you need to do that. But one of the key areas that I think is important is for you to build your RSP room and also um, build your uh, tax-free savings room, which you're going to need as you grow and you want to purchase a house. You know, you mentioned about housing. You can also, um, once you have that RSP contribution room and you start working and you start getting bonuses, in Canada, bonuses are usually taxed at 50% uh, tax rates. Therefore, it is better for you um, to put it in your RSP to save that taxes. You can then redraw that money from your RSP to purchase your first home as a first time home buyer tax free as well and so those are some of the incentives that are there and students of course new immigrants should take advantage of these things to help them enjoy the canadian dream thank you wow so basically as a student who has not worked at all mm -hmm. as long as they have a social insurance number uh guys as soon as you come into the country first of all you have to uh, have a status so uh, one of the status to uh, have is being as having a study permit. Mm -hmm. So once you have a study permit, you get a social insurance number. That means you are now partnered with the Canadian government, the revenue system, the money. Okay, you are now a number. They give you a number that state and also has responsibility attached to it that also allows you to claim certain benefits in the country so if you are a student you might not know that there's two monies that uh, prof uh, professor Odui just mentioned one of them is which is the hst yes. and the other one is in fact last climate. year was it this year that we received that climate whatever climate yes climate action incentive you get that as well incentive yes you see so if you if you come with your children, if you come with your husband, if you're a Nigerian, I know you've come with your husband. A lot of Nigerians comes with their husband. There's so much incentives that you can also claim. So once you have the social insurance number, you don't need to work to get this money. You must, even though you have a zero uh, income, you paid tuition. So out of the tuition, you have to claim the HST back as well as you mentioned another thing that they have to claim back. Yeah, so you get three things. The sales tax credit. That idea is because you are in the country, you buy items, you purchase items, but because you fall into what we call the basic amount, you you, know, you didn't make that amount of money. The government is giving you sales tax credit for the sales tax you've been, things that you've been buying. Now, the climate action, um, you get it because, um, you know, you're entitled to it because the government, you know, came up with that program as an initiative to help um, drive the climate action program that they are running. 
and then you also get a GST credit, which is given to you quarterly. Um, so you don't have to work to get those things. Now, the credit and um, the tuition side, you claim it as a credit, but it's better for you to claim that tuition when you actually started working and making some money and taxes have been withdrawn from your uh, taxes. So you get that refund back. So what we normally do as accountants is that we carry forward your tuition credit. Mm -hmm. When you when you graduate, by the time you start working, you can then use that tuition amount as a tax credit to lower your tax. Okay, okay, okay. So so guys, listen. I'm I'm on a student side because uh, there's a lot of things we are going to get into. So if you're here for the first time, I'll remind you again. Share the video. A lot of people I get phone calls from who are in a different country, but then their family members lives in the country if you are coming to canada you have to remember that there are a lot of things you want to place yourself in this country has a lot of opportunity and i will continue to mention that there are people here who has messed up the certain things so it becomes a bit difficult this country wants people who are responsible so they can share the money with them there's a lot of taxes in this country but we only pay how much tax miss only we pay between so canada has a lot of tax a huge tax network that captures a lot of taxes at the same time we get a lot of tax brackets so the tax bracket runs from zero um to 15 percent okay so um if you make any money below um, actually, if you make if you work in Canada, you make below what they call the basic amount zero to fifteen thousand. You don't pay taxes at all. The only tax you pay, they give it back to you. Now, from fifteen thousand to about twenty eight thousand, you pay fifteen percent tax break, and then it goes on and on and on up to a million dollars. And so the tax bracket grows as you make more money. So it's based on the Bible principles. The more you get, the more you know you you give. And so that's how it's based on, and it's very fair, so that everybody contributes their fair share um, to the uh, national capital um, pie. And so that's what happens. And so once you understand your tax brackets, you are then able to live and enjoy Canada very well. That's what you are trying to let people know. And like I keep saying, some of these things are not being taught in schools. Um, nobody will come and tell you what your tax bracket is, how much taxes you are supposed to pay, and even how much tax credits you are supposed to get back. Um, before we even move forward, because you mentioned people were in trouble, let me quickly jump into this. Um, there is a difference between um, tax planning and tax evasion. You know, tax is very, very complicated. So if you don't understand the terms, you're gonna put yourself into trouble. So tax evasion deals with a situation whereby an individual has evaded tax. So for instance, in the past, you know, some people were saying that they contributed to um, donation receipts, whereas they, did, they never contributed to it. And so if the CRA finds out that you are doing that, you have evaded tax, therefore it's punishable by law, and sometimes they give you penalties of up to 50%. Now, what I'm advocating is what we call tax planning. Tax planning is the right way of, it's, there are tap, tax loopholes that the government cannot do anything with that. That's the tax bracket that I'm mentioning. So if I work up to 15,000 and below, I don't have to pay any tax because it's a loophole. There's nothing that I can do. Um, but if I work more than that and I need to pay tax, then what are some of the things that I can do to get some of the taxes that I've paid back to me? As an individual. That's where you employ what we call tax planning, which deals with you know deferring your taxes, deferring your tuition, and so on and so forth to help you save taxes. And that's what we the experts you know try to advocate: tax planning and not tax evasion. Because if you evade tax in Canada, you know it's punishable by law and it's a very serious crime. And these are the things that I want the students to understand from the right uh, as they start school, because um, a lot of them will start making a lot of money over hundred thousand. You go and see people, they'll tell you, okay, um, you can evade the tax, you know, just go and create your own receipts. Um, or in some cases, you're working full time, but they say create your own business on the side so that you can add receipts to get tax credit. It doesn't work like that. There are incentives and way and structures that we put in place to help to make that happen. So there's a fine line between tax evasion and tax planning. I want to put that there, um, you know, before we get deep into the conversation very good this is very important guys listen to it i like to really because i've seen people who cannot apply for their citizen because of some of these invasion that professor uh Odue is talking about if you want to enjoy the full benefit of canada 
and also retire nicely. There are reasons why a lot of Indians don't claim citizenship because they have a lot of properties where they come from. And if you claim a citizenship in another country, the laws in other countries state that you cannot claim for properties. So we are not the same. We are not in the same basket. So we need to understand the uh, the international laws and other things. But if you are Ghanaian, if you're from Africa, you need to be very careful in this country. There's a lot of money that uh, uh, Professor Dwayne is going to take us through if you do things right. I keep saying the reason why LMIA has become very difficult within our communities is because of these things. We don't file the proper taxes. So a lot of companies, in fact, Ghanaians has companies in this country, but none of them has LMIA. Even the exempted ones, they've already ruined the credibility within the, uh, the Canadian immigration system. So we need to be very, very careful if you're here as a new immigrant or if you are here like myself and you are learning this thing, re take a U-turn, get back to where you actually fell off or you missed and build yourself up again. Because through Odue, I've been able to build myself seriously. I don't owe any Canada revenue. In fact, when they bring you a bill from Canada revenue, bring it to Odue, okay? Odue will help you. Uh, Pro Professor will help you. Very good. Because he teaches this at the university level and college level. And he has his own office in Toronto. So if you're new, a Canadian immigrant, a ca refugee student, go and see uh, Professor Odue in his office. He's going to help you claim your uh, uh, your HST back, that the benefit, which is the incentive that uh, everybody got. I got some. In fact, if you make less money, you make more money from the government. There are also benefits, dental benefits, all those things that he's going to talk to you about. He mentioned something that is very important. If you're here, pay attention to it. Some of them went to churches and gave offerings. Do you think a student should use the offering that they gave at the church to file for the taxes so they can get at least a bit back more? Oh, um, yes, that student worked. Yes, of course. I mean, the donation receipts are things that um, you are qualified for to use as uh, a taxpayer. But what we are advocating here is that um, you have to get the proper receipts from your church accountant and use the right amount on your income taxes. Now, um, what people don't know is that the national receipt, you can actually carry it forward for the next 10 years. And so if I go to, ch I went to church this year and I don't really need to use that receipt because I didn't work, I will tell my accountant to carry forward that amount for me. So that by the time I start working, I'm starting to money out. I might have accumulated about 40,000 in tax credits um, so that I can apply. So you can carry forward your donation um, receipts. Oh, wow. So yes. basically, if you gave donation this year, you can keep the receipts. Yes, and, and use it. it. Yes. And claim it in, um, in future years. Yes, if you haven't used it. Yes. OK, OK. Guys, listen to this carefully. Remember, some people went to churches in Ghana to give a lot of donation because they promised you your visa. Well, in this country, if you uh, promised a visa and you gave the money to a pastor, the pastor is supposed to give you a receipt. And this is what Professor Dwayne is talking about. You can compile those receipts. And in case you give $10,000 over the course of a year, you can save those receipts for the next 10 years. Is that what you're saying? Yes, yes. And yes. And if you have worked, let's say, 100000 and you've deducted, approximately maybe 25,000 from you in taxes, you can get between 20 to 30% back based on the amount that you've applied in your donation to this, um, you know, for, to do in that T1 general tax that you filed. And so that's why you need to keep the proper receipt and the receipt has to be done properly. There are some exhibits on the receipts. So for instance, when we go to task courts and, you know, we are challenging the court that um, the receipt is valid. One of the things that they look at is that there has to be a signature on the receipt. There has to be um, there must be the CRA website shown clearly on the receipt, the name of the, the church or institution that you attended, and also your full name on the receipt. That's all they want to see. And once those exhibits are there, then you are fully okay, you know, to um, um, claim that receipt. And like I said, you can carry forward that receipt if you don't need it. So accountants, you know, usually will tell you, 
you know, that they are using your receipt, but they have to use their receipts when it's needed. So it's always better to carry forward. So tax credits such as tuition, such as um, what you mentioned, the, um, the donations and those items that the CRA give us tax incentive to help reduce the taxes that you've paid can be carried forward if you don't use, need it in the particular year. Because let's say in the year that you are claiming you went to church, you donated two thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Now you you are uh, you didn't work fully, and so even if you put the two thousand as a tax credit, it doesn't give you anything. You still get the same amount like the GST sales credit and then the climate action incentive. That's what you get. But it's better for you to carry forward that um, donation because you didn't need it, and then in the time that you need it, maybe five years from now, you can apply it then, and then you can make good money. Okay, beautiful. So it's not because ab abroad is not good, because abroad is so good that people thought things are just lying there. In this country, you think you're doing something, the government, until you start to file for things, that is when you realize there's been a lot of things you've compiled or you piled up there, and they're, they're, they're going to get you. Um, so thank you very much for cl clarifying that as a student. What about the refugee? Someone who just came into the country new, um, well, can they uh, open up their own business? Because I know people do, in order for them to take a full advantage of the taxation system, and by the way, Canada is 15%, right? That's it. If you make a million dollars, do you pay more than 15%? Oh, yes, you, yes um, your tax brackets will go way over that. You're looking at even those making over 100,000 are paying about 25% taxes. And so, if you make over a million, you're paying a lot. So, that's why I'm saying it's based on the Bible principle upon whom more is given, more is expected. More so is more expected. Okay. So, upon who, uh, whom more is given, more, more is, is expected. Yes. That's how they build the, the system. Okay, okay. Do you think is that why a lot of people open up a business? What, 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 what is the advantage of, uh, you know, the, uh, determining your own tax brackets versus working for a company? Because a lot of people in this country, when you have your own business, what are some of the things can someone file to also get those things back and, you know, have some leverage there? So the government thought it wisely, you know, because, you know, in Canada here, um, you know, the, the the backbone of the economy lies solely on, you know, small businesses, SMEs. And so the government said that, okay, if you have a business, you get to write off certain incentives to help your business grow. So some of the things that they did was that you can write off your food, your gas, your even your food, meals and entertainment. And um, you can write off your insurance so that it will help you as a business person thrive so that you can hire more people and grow your business. And that's how the, that's why we call it the backbone of the economy. And so those things are given for you to have a huge tax credit or tax write-off to enable your business to so That's why they did that. Now, you mentioned refugees. As a refugee, if you are here, once they've given you social insurance, of course, you can register a business. So for some of our fr um, friends, brothers and sisters who are driving Uber, they're supposed to register it so that you can write off their maintenance because you are driving an Uber, um, you're making money, but you see that by the end of the year, your car will break down and then you say, oh, I've lost all my money. No, it's not true because the maintenance amount can be written off. Your gas amount that you're complaining about can also be written off. And so you cannot really complain that that's why your, your business is not thriving. That's why you need to employ a serious accountant who knows the system to help you alleviate the system. Now, you mentioned why do people um, even register business? Because I can lower my tax brackets. For instance, I told you if you make over 100,000 your tax, you'll be paying 25% taxes. I can, as a business person, pay myself dividends. And then, if uh, based on 100,000, I'll be only paying uh, less than um, 8,000 to the government. Whereas you, as an employee, you'll be paying from that taxes about 40,000. So I'm saving a lot of money. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. And so that's why once you pay yourself dividends, your tax bracket is taxed as a lower tax bracket. So for instance, if you, if you make up to 30,000, you only pay $300 in taxes. Whereas if you're working as an employee, you'll be paying $8,000 mm -hmm. 
by making thirty thousand. You see the difference. So that's why, that's why we do that, those tax planning. But the government did that to help small businesses prosper, the enabling them to make more money so that they can hire more people. That's why the economy is booming here. And if we employ some of these things um, in, in back home in our country, things will be successful. And so tax and tax brackets are good to know. But if you study the Canadian system, you see that everything is based on taxes, and that's why the country is prospering. Wow. So, so basically, if you make, let me just sort of repeat what, if you make $30,000 and if you are self-employed, you only pay $300. Yes, if you paid yourself dividends, yes. If the same $30,000 came to you, but you pay like only $30 in taxes. Okay. But if you work for Tim Hortons yes. and you make $30,000, your your tax payback is eight. dollars Thousand. Eight thousand, yes. So, so because you'll be paying CPP, EI, um, you will deduct all that, and then they'll deduct the actual income tax, which is about another four to uh, five thousand. If you add or eight thousand, will come from your fee, uh, your salary. So it's only about twenty-two thousand that came to you at the end of the year. But me, as a business person, can cash out the thirty thousand and and about um, twenty uh, nine thousand seven hundred comes to me. You see the difference? That's that's a big difference, but. Mm -hmm. You mentioned CPP and unemployment, for example. Yes. Let's talk about unemployment. The difference between unemployment benefit for working for yourself, you can get to put money on the side or, you know what, dive into a different business if you have to. Uh, but people, some people rely on the unemployment. They rely on the CPP. Uh, they also rely on the vacation. that They would like to take some time off. But do you think self-employment is more beneficial than working for a company in Canada? Yes, I mean, if you are self-employed, you know, there are two different type of people. Not everybody likes business. But if you are self-employed, you are still not missing out on the CPP. You can still contribute to the CPP. There is what we call the self-employment CPP. Now, for the EI, which is the unemployment, because you are the same person, you cannot fire yourself. And so you, you don't have the unemployment. That's all. But you, as, an, uh, as a business person, should be saving. And, and I believe that is one of the areas I'll be touching on today um, about saving and, and investing money in Canada. And That's so, you, as an individual, should be saving money. That's why I was talking about the RSP, Registered Retirement Savings Plan, um, to save money, your tax free savings. You can put everything in there. You can still also contribute to the national pie of the CPP so that when you retire, you'll be getting those money. You know, in Canada, when you retire, you'll be getting your CPP. Your guarantees investment supplements and you also get your canada pension plan um, which is a cpp and also get um what do you call it uh old age anybody with 65 years and beyond gets about thousand three hundred dollars a month um uh, as a canadian so all those things are things that helps you so that when you, when you retire you enjoy a better life but to enjoy a better life um or to be able to realize the canadian dream one of the first things you need to do is to invest not save Mm -hmm. Because if you save one dollar today, it's still one dollar. So when right. you know when we're growing up, they tell us to say, keep saving money. It's not the right way of doing um, of, of of becoming rich. Because mm -hmm. when you save a dollar today, it's still a dollar you saved. So we say that savings. But when I invest one dollar, that one dollar can grow five years from today. So a dollar save is still a dollar saved. But a dollar invested can grow up to ten dollars in the future. That's why we need to be investing, not saving. And so when people are saying that they are saving money, saving money, that will not make you rich. If you want to get rich, you need to invest. And so those are the things. But to get rich, you also need to understand the tax implication of becoming rich. Because if you don't understand the tax implications, you then um, go down the drill because, you know, your taxes were not filed properly. You hear those news on the, um, those um, kind of news all the time on TV in the United States where an actor was so rich, he did not keep his books properly and lost all his money because they didn't employ the right accountant or did not know the right tax strategies. One of the things that I want to mention before I, mean, I leave here today is that the tax pages, you know, the pages in the tax code is even more than the pages in the Bible, a lot of pages. And so the way it's, it's enshrined, it's, it's hard for you to learn everything. That's why you need to talk to experts who understand the tax code. For instance, you know, we deal with the tax court system. So um, CRA is not always right. So you can get a reassessment where they assess your taxes and they say you owe a certain amount of money. One of the first thing we do is to appeal if you, we believe that your case is right. We appeal to the CRA, we try to solve it with them. If they don't agree, we then take it to the uh, Task Court of Canada. If they don't agree, we take it to the Federal Task Court of Canada. 
and all those places, you know, um, we've won a lot of cases in, in that instance. And so anytime you get a letter from CRA or something, doesn't mean that they are right. And so that's why you need to talk to experts like us in taxation to help you um, reduce the burden of taxes. Now, even let's say you were wrong, that's the Canada government have incentives there that can help you reduce that tax burden. That's why you need to talk to us. There's what we call the, tax, the Canadian tax payers relief. And so if you are somebody struggling financially or there's a serious illness in the family, death in the family, um, there's a serious disturbance or some kind of natural cause like COVID happened and you've lost your job, those things are not your fault. The Canadian government will look at those and reduce all your tax interest and penalties. So in most cases, we found out that if you owe like 20,000, they'll reduce it to 10,000, about half. And then we can make arrangements with them to pay the remaining to get you out of that tax debt. So there are so many solutions out there, um, um, Lady uh, uh, Mavis, for, for you to let your viewers know that, you know, all is not lost when you get CRA letters and say that, oh, you are stressed, you cannot sleep and all that. Talk to experts and we can bring you out of that better. Wow, wow, wow. This is very interesting. It is good to know the country you are going to. That is why we bring you these things. It is very good to know Canada. Canada is like a person, okay? They have dislikes and likes, okay? They have issues, they have attitudes. Canada has a whole, it, 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 there, there are triggers in Canada. There are triggers. In case you triggered or stumble upon something, this is what Professor Odue is saying. All hopes are not lost. We can still get you out of it. I know a teacher who got a big bill and through Mr. Odue, the person got a big cut because um, these incentives works for people such as even that time there was no COVID, but yet they got a big cut because all those incentives are there that you need to talk to the experts about. Um, let me just ask, in case someone, uh, for someone who is here as a new person or as a, an old person, you want to buy a house. What are some of the things you should really start to pay attention to? And I want this to, I keep telling the newcomers, please, credit is like a, a chief tenancy in Ghana. If you have a good credit, you're a chief. I'm a whole, uh, uh, nene. this is Mr. Nee, you're looking at. He's a chief in Canada because he knows the laws that sustains people these are the leaders within the communities. This, these are the people we elect as chiefs, as leaders, because he knows how your finances can be at peace. He knows how you can be able to uh, uh, navigate through the system, mobility in terms of, because listen, your, your, life, your whole life can be very miserable if you have a bad credit, okay? I know that I am a first I have a testimony. I'm the first person to ask about credit. What are some of the things people should really pay attention to as a new immigrant, as a new, as a student in the country or someone who used to own, like, you know, have bad credit? Can you give us advice about credit? Okay. Buying a home. What are some of the things, what are some of the good investments someone can invest in? New person in Canada. Yeah, yeah thank you again. Um, you know, credit is one of the, like you said, very, very, very important in Canada. Credit establishment, managing your credit. Um, you can make as much money as you can make in Canada, like 200,000, 300,000 annually, and still not be successful if you have a bad credit. And now the funny thing is that credit counseling or teaching of credit, credit establishment is not taught in any schools in Canada. Mm -hmm. There's no, um, you know, even financial education, they don't teach it in high school or anywhere. Um, but when you come to Canada, you open your bank account. Um, after a few months, they will call you and tell you you've been award, or you've been given, a, or you qualified, you've been pre-qualified for a, a line of credit or a credit card. Now, once you qualify for those credit cards, they don't tell you how to manage the credit, how to pay off that credit, and realize um, good um, benefits from those credits. And so one of the things that I would like to talk about here today is that you mentioned about buying houses. Before you buy a house, yes, you see that it's a pre-qualified for this. Before and I you, buy, you need to have a good credit. They send you these things in the mail that you're qualified. 
for a credit of 7% interest rate. Now, I have, to make it sure, I have to make it clear today that credit card actually should be used for convenience, not for credit. So the, that one, brother, should be called convenience card. Convenience for credit. Yes, because they, they switch it for you. Because credit card shouldn't be used for credit. If you know you don't have the money to pay it, don't even use it. Use it. Okay. And also, in order for you to maintain your credit, you have to look at the utilization of your credit. So for instance, you showed us a credit for 5000 what that means is that you should put in your mind that you only can use up to 2500 Because if you use more than that, then and you don't pay on time and other things, it's keep affecting your credit. So mm -hmm. to establish your credit clearly, you should be making uh, payments regularly. You should be keeping your utilization, which is your credit limit. For example, if you have 5000 you should be using below 2500 So prompt payment, utilization, and also the frequent use of the same credit card. So you can be using the credit card for convenience, buying gas, you know, buying food, groceries, but you already know that you have the money in your account to pay for that credit. Now, why do you even need credit? You need credit because, like you mentioned, if you want to buy a house, for instance, the house is $1 million. You don't have the whole $1 million to go and pay down to buy the house. So lenders will look at your credit history to say that this person has a history of paying their debts on time, they are able to manage their debt properly. Therefore, let's qualify this person to buy a house of one million, even though he's, she's working, he or she is working and making thirty thousand, whatever, right? Because there's a stress test and all that. But there's there are also scenarios where you can have somebody making two hundred thousand dollars, but because their credit is bad, they can still not purchase a house for even five hundred thousand dollars because the lenders don't trust you that in the value three hundred thousand, you're going to pay that money back to them. It's a simple, um, you know, uh, scenario. So that's why you need to ensure that you manage your credit properly. So if you have a bad credit, um, I can tell you right now, a student's coming up, you cannot stay in this country. Even mm -hmm. if you want to rent a house, nobody rent your house to you because you cannot pay them the monthly rent. Um, if you're going to find a job in finance, banking, nobody will hire you because you cannot manage your credit properly. You know, if you want to, uh, even at times, if, if you even want to buy certain things, at certain stores that are only given on credit basis they don't want you to buy it cash you can't buy it so you see you find yourself wanting and uh, you'll be struggling and so credit is one of the things that you don't want to um, ruin your credit and one of the ways that we found over the years that people ruin their credit is number one a lot of people have not thought about that is by co-signing i always tell them to stay away from co-signing mm -hmm. you just arrive as a student one of your uncles aunties called you oh I uh, just came here. I've, I've been here for 15 years. You know, I've run my credit. Can you go co sign for me to buy this vehicle? Um, since you have a new established credit, don't do that. If you have money, you can borrow them the money or dash them something, mm -hmm. but don't co sign for them. Um, because credit is an individual thing, it's on your, it's on, actually on your social insurance number, which is you alone. And so, if you don't manage it properly, it come back and bite you in the future, and you'll not be able to live in this big country, Canada. And so please, credit establishment is very key. Now, if you are somebody who have ruined your credit, it's not the end for you. You can talk to us with our simple steps. We can help, um, we can guide you to, you know, uh, come, out, come out of that uh, bad credit. We can do debt consolidation. We can cancel you to tell you how to manage credit. We can even get you a secured credit card to help you establish and bring you back to where you were before. So it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. And so there are so many options that the government have put in, in place to help reduce uh, the, the credit uh, burden on you. Um, but, you know, you have to manage it properly. You don't want to get sick um, very badly and you go to the hospital on a stretcher. So that's why I want to fix the situation before it gets worse. And so uh, one of the things that you need to take a hard look at is your credit in Canada. If you don't have a good credit, you can't live in Canada, period. Yeah. Okay. Very good, uh, uh, Prof. So, guys, listen. Good credit is the only ways people can. In, in fact, in case you're going through something, you never know. Like he said, it's for convenience. It's not on credit. You don't borrow money to go buy, uh, let's say, a car. You shouldn't use your credit card to buy a car because the car don't bring an income. If you don't have that money sitting somewhere, do not use the credit card. The credit card is for convenience use. People get bad news all the time from back in your country. You need an emergency ticket to purchase. 
credit card has helped me immensely. So can I ask you a question? In case you have about four or five different credit cards, for example, and you are only using one, the other ones you are not using cannot affect your credit. Yeah, so the, you have what we call, um, if you have different type of credit card, it's good. Because once you have a good credit, all these other institutions will be coming to you, bombarding you with credit cards. You know, you're qualified for this card and all that. Those are not bad things. Those are all good. And because you are trying to establish your credit to get access to more funding. So you can be using those cards, but you have to be able to manage those cards properly. Because if you have five credit cards and you use all of them, if you're not able to track them properly, you will not know which one you've paid and which one you haven't paid. And so the other ones that you haven't paid will ruin your credit, which will affect the one that you're currently using. You understand? So that's why we tell people not to have a lot of credit cards. So for instance, if you have three credit cards, one is from RBC, one is from CIBC, the other one is from BMO, fine. You have established credits in those institutions. What you don't know is that if you have 10,000 on each, right, they are looking at you that you're qualified for 30,000. That's why they that's why they give you 10,000 each. It doesn't mean that your credit is so great. And, and so if you are paying, if you are running the two of them, you're rather killing yourself but if you use all three of them properly, it means that you are, you are able to manage credit properly. And so they'll be bombarding you with more credit. You understand? Hey, and so hey. you become more successful. Yes. And then, you know, a lot of rich people have made it because of debt. You know, they borrowed more money than you can borrow. And that's why they are rich. It doesn't mean that they were richer than you. The people become rich by borrowing more, actually. That's why a lot of people don't know. Because if I have access to borrow more money, I can go and borrow more money and establish businesses and make more money than you. But if you don't have that assets, you can be keep you can keep saving. You can never make money, and that, that's the difference. And that's why you need to have a good credit. Very good. So the more you borrow, yes, the more you borrow, the better for you. Yes. One Italian man, I was working at the gas station years back, mm -hmm. and one afternoon, I remember this man coming there. You know, I like to chat, so he he stayed around talking to me. You know, Vaughn area. Uh, you know, they've occupied the Italians. They have big properties. They have big businesses. Uh, they owned that that land basically. So he was telling me, oh, he's he had um, an offer for the gas. So he was using the money back, mm -hmm. the ones he has accrued. He said, listen, I would only take money if they are offering me <laughs> money back. Mm -hmm. Yes. So always use your incentives to buy, and that's what I do most of the time. I sometimes use the money that I've accrued, such as you know. Um, Costco card, sometimes they will send you like $80. I will mm -hmm. use that $80 to pay for the bill. Um, I will go and buy $10 something because it is, they bring it to you on a card like this. I buy $10 and the rest is given in change, cash. Yes. And I will use that money. So I'm very, 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 very paying attention now because of what the situation I used to be in. Mm -hmm. So the more you borrow, the more you are bombarded, which is because I just got this. $5,000 uh, RESP is for RSP, cash, uh, catch up. Yes. So I took it, and now it's showing up on my on my bank thing. Yes. That I have this money there. What 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 do you think, um, like a, someone who is like a, um, a new in the country, can they buy a house now? Give me one advice before you go. I'm not going to keep you long today. Today is a very busy day. We don't want to go further than we took a chunk of time out because we were late. But can can a, can someone can an immigrant buy a house? Can a new immigrant? Actually, the banks have uh, they have programs for new immigrants to purchase a house. Canada wants you to buy a house. They want you to have a safe place to live. Um, if you're a new immigrant and you came, you know you need down payments. Uh, there are programs that will guide you. Um, you know, there are structures in place for you purchasing a house. But I always say that in Canada, you don't bite more than you can chew. So if you go purchase a house, about $500,000, and your monthly payment, it's a certain amount that you cannot afford. You don't buy the house because you lose the house. You understand? So as a new immigrant, you've come to the system. If you're not somebody who was doing business in back home already, that have brought a huge amount of money, and you've also gotten employment to be able to finance the balance on your mortgage, then um, you shouldn't be looking at buying a house. What you should be doing is to save towards the purchase of the house. And so yes. once you save, yeah, invest the money towards the purchase of the house so that when you're ready, you talk to an analyst to analyze your situation and say that you're qualified for this 
property to buy. Now, you mentioned that Italians have occupied, you know, um, certain places in Canada. How they did it was that most of them did it through partnerships. And so one of the areas that we fall short is that we don't do partnership. You have a Ghanaian successful business person trying to do it all by themselves. But as you grow, you need to take certain chances and, and join partnership with people to grow bigger. Because, you know, when you're going um, alone, you can go to a certain level. But when you're going together, you can go further. And so but you need to be able to, to get the right people to team up with. That's what, one of the things that has drawn us back is because we don't work in partnership and try to, you know, do joint ventures and work together to grow businesses. But to answer your question, yes, immigrants can buy a house, but you need to be able to have at least a certain amount of down payment that, and also have a proper job documentation to show that you can actually provide uh, or pay your down your mortgage regularly. Now, the reason why, if you're in Canada here, they would like to see your job letter, but you've been working at a particular company for more than three years. But if you're a new immigrant, you haven't been here for three months and uh, three years. Mm -hmm. And so the government said, okay, look, let's look at this person and see how much down payment they are putting down and still give them an opportunity to purchase. But you cannot purchase a huge amount, but they, can they afford how much cash do they have left after they, they've done their down payment? Can they continue to pay a mortgage of 2000 3000 If the question is yes, they'll, they'll sell it to you. If you're not ready, don't even attempt to do it. You should save and then do it when you are ready. That's my advice. Okay. And 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 my next follow-up question is that can because as you can see, and you 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 are in that in industry, you've seen it. The Indians will be back in India, the Chinese will be back in China, the Ukrainians and the uh Russians and all those people buying Canada, the land and the houses, they've now taken almost a half of <laughs> almost a half of the land now can someone be in ghana and buy a house if they can because yeah you know a lot about yeah. it somebody I, mean, I mean that's what we call the foreign buyers program i mean they put it on hold for some time but it's back now i mean slowly um the if you want to buy a house and you're a foreigner yes you need to bring about 30 percent down payment um, I mean, 30% I mean, purchase in the first place. So if you have that kind of money, yes. If you want to buy outright, also, sorry. Um, sorry, I forgot to mention, the 30% um, percent is not what we are worried about because nobody, no bank will finance you in Canada, the remaining. So the Indians that you're talking about and other, other groups that we're talking about actually buy the houses cash. That's what people don't know. They buy the houses outright. And because if you want to buy a house and you're a foreigner, why would we finance you? We don't know your records in back home, whether you can pay us or not. Mm -hmm. But what is what you are you should be prepared to pay is what we call uh, the foreign buyers tax, which is about twenty five percent and twenty five percent taxes. Mm -hmm. So you have to pay that to the government. So the Canadian government rather makes more money by you coming to purchase it. We don't have a problem with you purchasing. So it was when there was uh, a lot of vacant houses. So if you are buying, maybe you are buying to rent as an investor. So you can come and buy a condo in downtown for two million dollars and rent it as a business person from anywhere in the world however there was a time that the canadian government realized that there's shortage in the system for those living here to buy the house the prices are too much and foreigners like you mentioned are coming to buy the houses in vancouver and other places and they were all empty so that's why the government employed or brought into place what we called the vacant home taxes and so if you have a home that you purchase and you're living outside of canada and nobody's in there it's considered a vacant home you pay taxes on it again so now you as an investor, ask, ask, you have to ask yourself, is it beneficial for me to even have a property here? What is it for me? What am I buying it for? If it's a vacant home and nobody is there, we still tax you for it. So the Canadian government rather makes more money. You've already paid 25% taxes. You're also paying vacant home taxes and so on and so forth. So you should be looking at it as an investment. And, and you have to be prepared to come and pay it off because no Canadian um, bank will give you a mortgage if you don't re reside here. For them to show proof of all your um, sources of income okay okay wow so these people have purchased these properties outright they've yes. in cash yes, yes. wow well yes. with a million dollars uh sitting in some of these rooms they can bring it to us we will purchase it for them you know uh so yeah if you have money back in ghana please uh you know there's so many montreal is growing uh with population going up to canada is growing population going up we've just hit uh 440 million 
Over yes. 40 million now, it used to be only 38. Due to COVID, many left, exited, and now uh, because of the immigrant door that is open to answer uh, the impact, the labor market uh, impact mm -hmm. assessment, which is the LMIA, a lot of immigrants are coming. 2024, we are stepping in again with expected over 500,000 people. No, yeah, 500,000 people into yeah. Canada. I don't know if they met the quota, but December is the time to really, really ready and go. And then you enter into 2024. Uh, so if you have more, how, more money back in Africa, please bring it in. Uh, there's a lot of rental opportunity here. Uh, Professor Odwe buys houses for people. He really gives a good, good advice on mortgages. What is the good lenders, if you don't fit in the mainstream, which is the bank, they are small. And he can also, he is part of um, what, a corporation that lend people money. Is that the truth? Yeah, we, 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 we you know, partner with uh, companies like um, Seed Rice Capital and other small brokerages to help uh, you get money, um, such, such, such as second mortgages, um, other mortgages that will help you enter the market so there's for instance your credit is not that great but you have the fund they have the money there you're willing to you know build your credit in one or two years but the prices of the houses are lower you don't want to miss opportunity we can get you mortgages to enter into the market while you build your credit so that wow. you don't miss opportunity yes so we wow. partner with other institutions but our company which is reality capital management where we solely deal with accounting bookkeeping taxation tax planning task court representation. So that's the key, task court representation. If you have an issue with CRA, we are the people to talk to. We talk to CRA on your behalf. And so a lot of people are in trouble with the SEB, you know, recently that the government gave. Hey, hey. Most people are not I should, I should, have, I should have claimed that money too. Eh? <laughs> but you were they working. Were, you were not no, no, but they were writing to me. When you when I go into my revenue, like um, the my, my Canada revenue, when I enter into the system, they said, I'm eligible. Why would you tell somebody they're eligible? You know I'm working. So, you know, yes. it was so tempting that now I heard they've uh, fired almost 200 employees who were working for the government, but yet claiming the money. Aye, that is but, so but, true. Yeah, that was a, that was on the, it was true. They, you go on there, they tell you you're eligible for it. But when you read it clearly, you yourself know you're not eligible. So once you accept it and, and you know, they go back. In Canada, they can go back for seven years to look at the taxes again and make a determination. And so that's why you are getting letters in the mail. They call it redetermination. They know that they told you you were eligible. Now they've determined, they've redetermined that you're not eligible. So bring your money back. That's why they say bring the same amount of money. But now if you don't bring the money by the time that they give you, then they will penalize you with interest and penalty. And okay. so you have to be careful, you know, when taking money from the government. Yes, you have to be very careful. The only way money that <coughs> they don't get back is welfare. Even if you're on welfare, don't go and claim any money. Don't go and work under the table. And all those people, they are new immigrants. If any lawyer tells you, oh, claim um, uh, uh, what uh, social assistance and work under, don't do that. Don't make it a habit because you're going to, money is one of those things. But Professor mentioned something here, very, very key. Ghanaians, Africans don't partnership, so we don't make it big. I see pockets of stores you know, restaurant where we could have, you know, go gone into a partnership venture like the Indians and the, the rest of the other people and buy even the Tim Hortons, it just passed us. Um, but there's also an opportunity in different provinces. Ontario is expensive, but when you go to different provinces, uh, they said many people are buying uh, a shopper's drug mat. I know a gentleman who owns Shoppers Drug Mart in a different part of Canada because it's cheaper. Mm -hmm. In fact, Canada is asking people, investors, to invest in one of those towns. They will sell you the land for $5. Did you hear mm -hmm. that, Mr. Yes, yeah, we're talking about $10 somewhere. Um, <laughs> okay. we bring, um, yeah, in, in northern Ontario. They, are, they were trying to let people to come there. You know, Canada is one of the biggest countries in the world, actually. My yeah. land side, we're the biggest country. And so we, our population is only 40 million and we are not that much so there's opportunities but it's how you realize the opportunity and how you utilize this so supposing like you said we have businesses who have partnered we can go and establish a whole community there 
that's what the Italians did in the 80s. And if you're looking at Woodbridge and all those places, they went there, built stores, built Tim Martins and all that, and established. So those opportunities, this opportunity that you're seeing today have come before. If you look at 1983, if you read the history in Toronto here, it was the same. Now the opportunity has come again, but we don't, we are not ready. The opportunity is here now for us to go and purchase those places as a team. The, the city want people to come there, stay there and live there. That's why they are selling it cheaper, as cheaper like that. But who is willing to go there and establish the business? You alone cannot be have the capacity to do that. And so that's an area that we as a community need to sit down to take a hard look at if we want to thrive and be successful in this country. Um, I'm not sure if you'll be reading some of the comments, that, but I, I see people asking um, about the credit. That was a range. That is a good credit. I just want to quickly comment. I see that a lot of people are asking, but um, one of the things that good credit, you know, credit range actually starts from 300 to 900. And in Canada, people who have good credit are supposed to be having credit of over 700 and above. Now, if you have 680, it's okay, but it should be leading towards 700. Anything below 680 is not considered a good credit, and you will be struggling to get access to credit. And so I just want to put that out there. And let's go get good credit. Let's go to these places in Northern Ontario, purchase places, and also build communities. Um, because as we came here, we saw that different countries have created their own community. They've pushed people politically to rise to the top, um, to go do things for them, to advocate on their behalf, because they live in a community. We don't have that. Mm -hmm. And so once we, we, we want to stay in Canada to realize the Canadian dream, these are some of the things that we need to do. Otherwise, these opportunities will be coming all the time, and they will keep missing it, and we keep complaining that things are not uh, are easier for other communities in Canada. It's not true. The opportunities have been given to all of us. It's up to you to take it. That's why Ontario says that it's yours to discover. That's it is right. you. The opportunity is for everybody. You discover it, take it, run away. It's either you run away with your team or you alone run away. But I'm saying that if you alone run, you get tired, nobody will motivate you to move forward. And so let's do that. Let's help um, the youth, let them be stronger, and let them do better than what we have done. I mean, all the young people coming now, a lot of people, a lot of them actually came as students. Unfortunately, um, they cannot even um, go to the school because it's, it's very expensive uh, mm -hmm. for some of them to pay their fees and all that. But they shouldn't um lose hope what they should be doing is to be working and going to school at the same time the government knows that that's why the government gave you the opportunity for the first time to be working and going to school at the same time it wasn't like that before they increase your hours so don't just be working and converting the fact that they're paying you 15 dollars an hour into Ghanaian currency and say that you're rich in ghana and therefore you're not going to go back to school it's not true the money you're making you're being you're spending that money here in canada and so you cannot compare yourself that you're making four thousand dollars a month so you're okay you don't want to go back to school the education system will open doors for you it will put you in the place that you want to be so don't do so you came as a student most of them went to university of ghana um other great high schools and they are here now and they are saying that they are not going back to school um that's the place that we are lacking and so we shouldn't encourage that we should encourage our people to to be able to move forward and let's try to enter certain institution like the banking institution Let's enter the government um, institution, the governmental institutions, and also, you know, um, enter into other areas such as credits, uh, financial um, institutions to help our people also qualify for mortgages. Oh. You know, I teach at Amber College and Gulf University. You know, in my class, sometimes I don't see anybody um, in our community, and that's very sad. And so we need to encourage uh, people to, you know, go go to school part time. That's what that's what I did when I came here, and I was working part time um as time goes on you still graduate you don't necessarily have to graduate within two years exactly you know so please um, let's let's help the youth to grow and so if you're able to get um, good credit um good income you'll be okay and one of the things that i forgot to mention is budgeting for you to have a good credit you need to have a proper budget so for instance if you know that they pay you two thousand dollars okay you should be able your mortgage right or your rent should not be more than half of your salary Mm -hmm. So if you pay two thousand dollars, the highest mug, um, rent you should have should be around seven fifty, mm -hmm. so that you can save money in the rest and then use the rest to live, uh, you know, buy your other necessities. If you are spending, if you are spending money more than what is coming in, that means your budget is negative and therefore you are biting more than you can chew. Only two things you can do to come out of this: either you find a part-time job to get more money. Mm -hmm. or to find somewhere within your budget to cut costs for you to be able to live properly. Otherwise, if you continue to live like that, it means you're biting more than you can chew. 
which means that which means that you would actually uh, find yourself wanting slowly. That's how people get more into debt. So people come here, they say, oh, we've been here for 10 years and 20 years and things are difficult. Of course, things will be difficult because the more you stay here, the more you accumulate the uh, more debt and yeah. you are not looking at budgeting. Budget is very important. That's why even the government, as big as they are and the power they are, they, every year they come up with their own budget. Mm -hmm. So why is it that you as an individual don't have your own budget? As mm -hmm. a year ends, one of the things I would like to challenge the students and uh, people in our community is to create budgets. Create a budget and say that the whole year are making $50,000. Out of the fifty thousand dollars, twenty thousand goes into rent. The remaining is here and there. But what budget does is that it tells you where all your sources of money are coming from and where the money is going. Once you put pen and paper down, you realize that you have thrown a lot of money away. That's and true. so that's where you may be able to know where to cut. If you don't do that, you cannot be financially free. So to be financially free, one of the key things there's no secret is budgeting and investing. Period. Mm -hmm. Budget and you'll be financially free. Okay, very yeah. good. And you, you mentioned one thing that we should look into uh, investing in one, some of these towns. Um, if you're a Ghanaian here, you come from village. If, even if you're in Accra, the minute Kotoka International Airport or you go to uh, um, any place, you are from a village. Because many people step touches in Ghana, they don't sleep. Accra, they take their, their car is ready straight to Kumasi, straight to Atakurade, straight to wherever in Ghana they are coming from. So you are from a Kumasi, you are from a town. Ghana is not a nation. We don't have this sky high scrapers and all those lights are even dead in your areas. In fact, you get out of your house, you live in a beautiful home, get out in Futuro. So we are all in a village. So we need to, but guess what? Driving from here to New York, driving from here to Montreal, driving from here and going outside, even Toronto, you realize that we come and uh, we are like it looks as if they've just released us and we get stuck in a big city. This is very important that living outside the country is beautiful. It is a heaven on earth. It is like a paradise. The land is designed as if it is a book. Mm. If there's no a quiet, like a bush, where big trees and you are, sometimes you walk, you go for cassava, you walk and you can only see the sun piercing through those big, big uh, trees. It's not like that here. So these towns are like a big city in Ghana. It's mm. like the city you guys are priding yourselves about. So we can invest in those small cities. My flowers are producing a lot of food. Mm. You can invest in those towns. When we come here, I think we should be taken straight to a farm. So don't be afraid to stay in those small cities. And you also mentioned about uh, the fact that we don't, if we can only, uh, you know, partner and become successful that way in our community, and especially in Canada here, when you see the amount of years people are spent in Canada, and you go outside it, it's sad. Yes. What Ghanaians owns in this country? It's, we owe nothing. In fact, we are struggling to, uh, you know, acquire a community center. Small community center, our focus is so wrong. So please, yes. if you're here for the first time, I say, hey, how can I get in touch with Prof? If you are in Canada, Professor, let me put down your uh, office information so people can get a hold of you. It is a tax season. From December, me, this is the man I go to. This is the go-to person for every fund I had. I'm going there and say, here is my paper. So one money, turn it into money for me. I'm going to Montreal. I'm doing my social work, my social media things. Some of the courses, it is a business, and I'm in one. Yeah, they are business related. Yes, they are business. Actually, they are actually any, any, any expense that you incur, any expense that you incur while doing a business is is a write off expense. Uh -huh. So, so if you are doing child care and you are using your phone, you are calling, you are buying materials, tea rolls, and everything, taking care of the kids. Those are all supplies and materials. Those are all written off expenses. So, if you make twenty thousand, once we deduct all the expenses, what is left is what you pay taxes on. 
and so it makes your business thrive so for instance like you if you travel you can claim for hotel accommodation and um, for gas and all that those are all written off expenses as long as you are keeping the receipts hey, hey, hey. so what's preventing you from keeping receipts it's easy you can actually put it in on your credit card because you have to trace the oh, expenses yes. It's a credit card. I use credit card. So yes, I can so bring the expense for us. Yes. Okay. Very good. So this year, I want to make seven thousand dollars. Was it? What can somebody? How can someone? Uh, what are some of the things? Our last one that people can file to get more money back, like church donation. What are that things? Mm. Can someone? So if you have a child, people who are taking their children to soccer game, all these things, do, do the government pays you back for extracurricular activities for your children? Yes. Um, so it's gl I'm glad that you mentioned these things. In the past, the government have so many incentives where they even said that even if you have a dependent outside of the country, you, know, you can claim the dependent and all that. The government changed all those things. Yeah. You know, some of the times we misuse the tax system and then rules are changed and all that. So, you know, the, the one that you mentioned with the extracurricular is no more there. But I can tell you right now, the government always come up with new things. And so, uh, first of all, one of the things to do, once you see that the year has ended, um, we have an email uh, system that we're using now. You send us your tax slips, we review it, and we will come up with a tax plan for you in areas that we think that you can save money at. Now, the tax credits that are out there, um, the traditional ones are if you have medical expenses, you can claim. Um, if you have childcare expenses, so you are too busy, um, somebody's looking after your child for you, even your grandmother looking after your child, you can pay her and then she reports that on their taxes, and then you claim that as a tax return. Um, so that's also there. Um, you can claim donation, of course, charge receipts because you are giving tight and all that. Um, you can also go even further to look into tax um, bonus deferral. Some people, end of the year, they're going to give them bonus, but because the bonus will be taxed at a high tax rate, they don't want that bonus to be included in their pay. They can actually defer that. You can either buy RSP, um, that gives you um, some types of tax incentive and, and so many other things that are there, but everybody is different. You know, in tax um, filing, we can ask certain questions and by you answering those questions to us, we'll be able to, you know, arrive at a, a, a conclusion that maybe you are qualified for this credit or not. But the ones I just mentioned are the basic ones that are out there that a lot of people are fall, fall within. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, uh, guys. If you want to get a hold of Mr. Odui, one thing that I'm taking home with me is keeping my receipts, uh, my hotel bills, uh, the food I cook for the guests, and also making the phone call. Even using my internet is going to clean that yes. this is for business. My internet, everything I'm using, the lights, everything I purchase on Amazon, I'm claiming all those things mm -hmm. in Canada. Everything of those sorts, you can claim it. Yes. In fact, you went and uh, purchased something so you can get yourself prepared for presentation. You can yes. claim that as well. Uh, you know, people buy insurance on their voices. The people who use it, their voices. In this country, you want to buy insurance on your hair. You can also buy that if mm -hmm. you want the hair. The insurance people, but make sure you don't perm your hair. Or if you perm your hair to lose your hair, insurance will say you deliberately perm the hair. All those logic is one of the things that they use, biblical concepts, they use to ensure that the policies works for everybody. Another thing, if you're a student, please make sure that there are three claims. Even if you did not work in Canada, mm -hmm. even if you did not work in Canada, what if about those who deferred their programs and started working? Yes, anybody, once you have a social insurance number, whether you defer your program or not, you can file. So please, guys, anybody. if you have your social insurance number, file so you can get file. something back. Yes, file and you get so many benefits, not only the money side, but you're also getting building yourself into the Canadian system. That's you are a tax um, payer, you are somebody that is, is for their tax. Um, you know, what people don't know is that the Canada Revenue Agency, I want to say CRA, their full name is actually CCRA, it's actually Canada Customs and Revenue Agency. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you are here, they already have data on you that you're in the country, they've given you a social insurance number, please file your taxes, get recognized in the system. 
so that you know you can um you know in the future i mean when you're applying for pr and all that they will ask you to bring your notice of assessment which will be talking about those things in the future you know finance is a broad topic and you know i'm, I'm busy i'm always traveling around but um anytime you want to talk to me about finance i'll make myself available to help the, the community but you know the taxes are very very important let me tell you some key issues why you need to file your taxes aside from the money if you want to bring your grandmother your grandfather your girlfriend anybody else of the, of the country you need to show you your notice of assessment and so if you haven't filed your taxes you cannot bring them recently during COVID, when um, canadians got stuck outside of canada for us to bring them back for the government to pay your your fare for you you need to show your tax notice of assessment to show that you file your taxes so taxes are very very important these are the few things um that i can mention but there are so many other benefits uh, by filing your taxes not only by getting the money and so you should it's something that uh, you know is, is, is a mandate for you to do now last couple of years the government has about two point something million dollars of unclaimed credits that you mentioned that people have not come to collect that money is sitting down with them it, so collect the money file your taxes and the government will give you those checks and so last year two point something million Yes, that on filed, on filed claims, people have money there that they haven't claimed. At the same time, as you know, um, if you owe them to, they'll collect their money. So it's vice versa. But those who are making money will pay more money. Those who are not making money will get money. It's a simple system that they use here. Um, you are, um, for, for me, uh, what I would say is that uh, make sure you file your taxes on time. Um, taxes starts around 15th of February um, and it ends around um may 1st um this year um 2024 um for businesses or sole proprietors like maybe it's yourself you guys have have up to 15th of june to file and then for corporations whose year end ends at december 31st have up to up until june 30th or six months after your calendar um your fiscal year end to file taxes as a corporation so for individuals we start filing taxes from february 15th up to may 1st and then for sole proprietor, you have up to 15th of June um, to file. And then for corporation, you have July 1st or June 30th to file your corporation taxes. And so those are some of the things that um, you guys need to go out there and do and, and help realize, you know, the Canadian dream. And um, there's also um, the dental benefit that they are giving. The Canada want to also give dental. You know, in Canada, Medica uh, medicals, um, we have free Medicare and all that, but now they're looking into dental as well. And this year they're looking at your income and anybody who have filed their taxes. For you to qualify for benefits, you need to file before April 30th to qualify for those benefits. So okay. yes, once tax season is here, um, you can reach out to us and we'll assist you. Okay. Um, you know, it's difficult to get hold of me, so it's always good to get my office number. Mm -hmm. And also um, we prefer a lot of emails. We respond promptly to emails as well. Okay. So. Yes, my uh, office number is 647. Let me put it down there. Um, so it is, let me put it down there. It is reality. Capital management. Okay. Capital management. Yes. And uh, you can get a hold of them. This is for tax purposes. Um, call at uh it is uh six four seven six four seven three four eight mm -hmm. three zero zero two three zero zero two and it's just right here in toronto um in fact if you are in you know yeah, we, we... Area he yeah, anyway, we, we, we if, if you email us, you go to our website. If you type realitycapital.ca, um, you go to our website. There is a way that you can upload your taxes with file for you. We have a lot of clients in Alberta, and we also have a branch in Vancouver as well. But okay. our head of this is located here in Toronto. Okay, so realitycapital.ca. Yes. Okay. So and I also just, email us at info at realitycapital.ca. I yeah, just put it out yes. there. Yeah, so that's the best option to get us and we'll respond on time. During tax season, especially for the students, you go there, you say file taxes on our site, everything comes to us. I'll, I'll probably call you um, right away and then guide you through um, if there's any tax planning we need to do for you, what you are qualified for, and, and so on and so forth. And we can help you, you know, realize more uh, money and also 
how you can go about things in Canada. Thank you so much for having us today. Okay, so guys, thank you very much uh, today. And Mr. Odwe, uh, Professor Odwe, he also teaches at um, Amber uh, College and Guelph University. Amber College and um, Guelph, Guelph University, yeah. Yeah, and Guelph University. And Guelph University yeah. uh, about management, financial management, and I also accounting, um, financial mathematics, and statistics. Okay. And statistics, wow, this is a very difficult uh, interest. And I was in that class once at Rice, and it was just, uh, uh, in, in fact, if you don't have the head for it, you can't do it. I wonder why it's very hard to get. So thank you very much for coming. If you need any help with your tax this year, if you're a student, if you're new, go there. Um, he has a team of uh, a group of people who can help you. He has helped me since I, my restaurant. I never owed the government. Even last time they sent me a message that I owe them, you know, because talking to him and I know what to prepare for. So guys, Canada is free. It is yours to discover. Make it an attempt to speak to the, uh, I would say the godfathers on the land, which are Mr. Uh, Professor, Mr. Professor Honorable. Mm -hmm. I will, I will put Dr. Day. Also. Mm -hmm. right now, that's what it going. Oh, no. Right now, they've added another title, engineer. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I've, I, I, I finished an MBA in 2022. Do they owe me money in Canada? Are you in Canada? Mm -hmm. you, do you know that many people come mm -hmm. as a student, they don't file tax? Yes, they don't know. And and nobody talks about it. And even yeah, they are you know, there are Canadians who don't even file tax, they get their teeth for they throw in the garbage. A lot of people don't know. That's the 2.5 million that is sitting in the government. And we want to collect that for you. Um, you need to file your taxes. Like I keep saying, taxes are very important if you want to live, um, you know, amicably and nicely in this country. You need to file your taxes and pay your taxes if you owe them. Now, if they owe you, they pay you back. But the taxes will determine so many things. If you want to buy a house, if you haven't filed your tax, you can't buy it. So that's what I'm saying. The taxes gives you so many benefits. Not only filing your taxes is for the refund. The refund is the key thing for most people. But you, if you want to um, bring somebody from back home, immigration-wise, you need to file your taxes. If you need to buy a house, purchase a house, you need to file your taxes. Buy a car, you need to file your taxes. Because they will look at your assessment to make a determination on how much you make and so on and so forth. So it, it goes into so many things. You want to get benefits, health care. You know and all other, other benefits you need to file your taxes so taxes are actually the key component of um canadian um you know um uh, investments my son, my son the first time he filed his tax with you the government owed him money and he yes. never worked so yes. uh and he filed it with you too uh sharp brain physics uh was in canada i he have a three-year a three-year permit work permit and he never filed his tax so yes yeah, you need to file you need to file we can file, we can go back, we can always go back. We can go back to any year to file to bring you up to date. And then we have something called the non residents Canadians who were here before they left the country and they've come back in, they can always file and get their benefits. So yeah. these benefits are all part of the money that is sitting there waiting for you. So, you yes, you can file. Yes. Very good. So, what about uh, uh, children who were born here, took them back to Ghana, now they are back? Can they? File okay. Yes, they can file. Yes, once you are, you see, when you, once you are 16 years and up, you can start filing your taxes. Um, or let's say 18. And if you start filing your taxes, even if you're not working, what you are doing is that you are building your RSP contribution room. And you're also building, um, you know, your tax-free savings room, and also you become more financial independent because you understand the process. How the fact that you have to pay taxes to the government, and then you start learning the system, and that's what. Most of the white folks have done and and to build their children to understand the financial system exactly. because finances are things that we don't talk about in our homes as you know and so a husband and a wife will be living together and you know they will not be talking about their finances and sometimes it ruins their relationship finances you have to talk come clean out of it do a budget you know whether you have money or not yeah you know, if you're a refugee yes mm -hmm. if you're a refugee yeah that's what we that was the beginning Students and refugee, please file for your Students, tax. Refugee, anybody who have a social insurance number can actually file their taxes and realize yeah. some benefits from the Canadian system. And these are all legal advices. I mean, these are legal things that you need to do 
and it's actually mandated that you file. It is mandated, guys. So uh, I see a lot of pe people coming to the school. I need a letter. I need a letter because now it's a start for immigration review. So they need a letter from the school, mm -hmm. uh, and the immigration is going to go back and see if they worked. Yes. Okay. So they it, listen, guys. It, it's not. Come on, Canada is not where you come from. You gotta. You, you have to know that it's so easy if you know the system. You will stay here very comfortably. Don't give yourself too much headaches and problems that you cannot solve. Ask the expert, ask the people. I've done it. But uh, 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 Professor Audrey mentioned something about um, about about um, uh, working in places that can help us. Let me tell you my story and then we will end. Over there, my on back on. Let me tell you my story. Listen about working in places to also approve mortgages for your people. It is so important. We are so lacking. During the COVID, I had a bad credit. Well, I don't know if I had a bad credit, but I, my credit wasn't good, okay? And the, this is during the COVID. Though. Today that I'm getting left and right, come, we'll give, we have 7,000. We have approved $25,000 at the bank. Mm. But I just fixed my credit just recent. So I went into the bank because I wanted a new car. My car was giving me a problem. And I said, listen, it was just before the COVID. And I went in and my credit was bad. The interest was high. It was a refugee. Mm. Huh. Anyway, so I got my car given to me because the person I was with, was, I roughly, you know, I said, well, why don't we try yours? And, and then his was a lower, a, a lower interest. So I took it. So the guy said, go to the bank and tell them you need a secure credit. Secure credit is when you, your money, they feed it on a card. Mm -hmm. But the bank is, it's tied to the revenue that the Ontario, whatever, the Canada, uh, credit card system. Uh, credit card system. Yes. Credit bureau. So it can rate my um, activities as good or bad. Mm -hmm. I went to the bank, an Indian person, and I'm going to say this: the Indian cancel. I was approved. It was a. It was a. It was a. Um, it was a secure credit card. It's not your mm -hmm. money. It's my money. It was approved. The card was approved. I took soon as I turned around, the guy saw an old bill and canceled it himself. So about a few months, four months later, I went to the same bank and I saw a Ghanaian. The Ghanaian was, I, as soon as I saw the, the body, I know my own people. So I said, brother, <laughs> today you go help me. I came here to get a credit card and I'm very eager. I do. I have a good, I have a, a job. I can pay and now I'm good. Now I'm good. So when I used to go to school, I used to pay gas with credit card and I didn't have the money. What Odwe is teaching today, I didn't know. Okay. What Odwe, I used to pay, I used to buy food with credit card because RBC, I, 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 like I didn't know. So it took us a long time to realize this thing. So I went to the bank and the, the, the guy I saw was a Ghanaian. I said, you, you're going to have, he said, okay, uh, let me clear the queue and go sit in my office, wait for me. So as we were talking, apparently he was, he took my information and he clicked on one of the card. He said, let me try this one for you. If it doesn't work, then we'll do the secure. But if he just did this, I don't know. So let me try. By the time he, he said, ah, are you sure you don't have a credit because you've just been approved almost $9,000 right in front of him. So it means sometimes it's not because you have a bad credit. Mm -hmm. It is the trust the other immigrants don't have for the black people. Mm -hmm. And this is this this country, it, no matter what you do, we are going to be the ones to help ourselves. You need to help. You need to help yeah, ourselves. I mean, I mean, I mean, Canada, like I keep saying, it's not for anybody. I mean, we are all immigrants. Everybody here, the people that you sit here, you see here, the white people that you see are all immigrants, fourth generation. Nobody was here. I mean, it's a uh, it's a new world, and so it doesn't belong to anybody. We, exactly. well, we are, once you are here, we are all here to compete, and so uh, if we don't push our own people to a certain level, you might not get the favors that you are just talking about. Exactly. That's what we are advocating exactly. that we work together, we all push ourselves to the best of our ability to realize things 
let's be in the system let's be in the financial system because something something small can they can refuse you whereas if you have your own people there they can approve you they and can I, I can make or break you in canada and that's exactly. all i'm trying to have exactly. so, so it's a good thing that you brought me on the program today i hope that i have um given um the best i could today and anytime you're ready to have me you know let me know and then we'll make the time to do it i, as we enter into the Canada, I know uh, as we enter into the tax season i might i will be busy but um i'll make time if it's 30 minutes or so to come okay. the program to talk about finances but finances are always i mean today we just talk about a small piece of it small piece so i want to dive in small you know kobe is here kobe is in um is it uh at edmonton and mm -hmm. he's a money eater you need to get a hold kobe get a hold of prof now on fix so no matter how much you owe with the revenue canada he can clear you off no matter how much money you he can clear because when I get it, the guy fixed me up. Like, I didn't have a bad credit. I did not have a bad credit, but I thought I had a credit. Another one I met, and I said, I need a line of credit. So he was the one, for Munchei. That means, listen, when, I, when you see your own people at this, those areas, try to help. Go extra miles for them. We have suffered. Professor, thank, thank you. you very much for today. He said, How have I have a question? He has a question. What is your question, Kobe? Why, why, why is your question Kobe? let's see if we can take the last question so i can run last question so you can go please and Kobe, maybe um let me see let me see Kobe, ask it your question if it's not there they can email us as well yeah mm -hmm. ask your question or you you click on the link you can enter for quick a second view uh, please prof so if you have a question about you know how to qualify for mortgage how to qualify for if you want to start you don't have any credit card prof can help you uh secure a small 300 dollars credit for you to start with if you are new as soon as you open the bank now the bank are throwing the money at you they will give you uh a, a cre credit line or um uh, credit limit they will give you something three hundred dollars mm -hmm. if you're, if you're a student uh in canada as soon as you come to canada go to the bank bring your passport to the bank you open up an account if you're a student you're the, the, or a refugee you see that refugee paper you get walking to the bank they will give you a secure line of credit which i uh, know a line of credit which is about 300 Many Ghanaians has come, they use that money and they owe a line of credit. I don't get it. $300. You're going to use $300 to ruin your $500,000. Don't do that. So, Kobe, if you want to come, you can enter. Okay, Kobe is here. Oh, try to yes. add him. He disappeared. Okay, enter quickly so you can ask your questions so we can uh so they can go enter quickly make your device quickly okay good add so ask your question for me good 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 afternoon good afternoon anyways i can wait six minutes now uh prof betiao over on waga uh like all secure loan with uh, a particular bank, equal uh, a man who equal 40 40 uh line of credit. Uh, can you still increase it at low cash and like a limit? Uh, I mean, it's hard to grow, or it's better to go to another brand, another um different institution uh, altogether. Mm. Yeah, I want to increase all the time, but me no, I don't want to increase. Well, I just wanna, I just wanna have purchasing power. Ni kenu ko ni minto minto ma groom le tu ekole abo half a million. Ni kenu ko ni minto ma here. Manage manage ma here without going to them every time to seek permission or get get grant. So ekole ke tu ko ni minto ma flip e and I see kesi it's good for me. I don't need them to come and do the appraisal or whatever it is. Can here get grant. Then you need you need you need line of credit instead of credit card. 
Lana kwa ite nonchon wa keshe kule Tomo RBC ya mitumo 40 Eh, enye, enye ya hinye don Because Eh, kwa nye ya hinye Because Kwa nye ya hinye Kwa nye ya hinye Kwa nye ya hinye English, English Uh, kwa nye ya hinye If he has a $40,000 line of credit Can he go back to the bank And ask them to increase it Kwa nye ya hinye Kwa nye ya hinye Kwa nye ya hinye Kwa nye ya hinye Kobe, I think he joined late, so he didn't know. Uh, what yeah, saying, yeah, he, yeah, I did. He joined late, so I, I answered did. that question already. Yeah, so you have a line of credit, limit of 40,000. Can he go to a different bank a bank to go and ask for an increase? Or he thinks that because he's with this particular bank, he's already hit his um, limit. What we are saying is that if you have a good income and you have your assets, then you can show they can increase that line of credit for you at any branch or at the same place, too. It doesn't matter. Because, because I tried before. it. I tried it, and they were telling me something about. My debt to income ratio, my, yes, my, yes, my debt to income ratio. Where and then on top of that, they, when there is um, uh, there's an equity on the property sitting there. Why did you always want to use that again, Jackie? Why are you not using that money, but you want the unsecured? Eh? Yes. So how do how do you how do you buy? I know if I used to have. So Kobe's line is frozen. Yeah, it's, it's, somebody you cannot. You cannot he cannot, um, he cannot, uh, what I was trying to tell you is that, Kobe, is that uh, your debt to equity ratio, uh, once you've maxed it, anywhere you go, or any bank you go, is the same resource. They yeah, hello? So, yes. Sorry, sorry, I'm back. Yeah, yeah I'm uh, sometimes yeah. when you meet these Asians, eh, they look down on you and they want, it's like, it's like a struggle for them yes. to get you going, right? Yes. That's why oh. sometimes you need to talk to people who know who put the package together and then present it. They will mind look at it differently. But you know, every bank has their own threshold. But in that threshold, there's always some loopholes. Uh, mm -hmm. so you know the right people. Sometimes you're able to get the opportunity for them to help you. Uh, well, realize you tell, me, tell me if you if let's say yeah that one. Yeah. I will. I will. But then one more question too. Uh, what is this made about this? Um, what do you call them? those credit unions eh, against these five major banks? Eh? Is there advantages to have uh, an account with these credit unions than these uh, CIBC, RBC, and these yes. uh, TD banks? Eh? Yeah, the credit unions, eh, they, they, they are a little bit lenient than, the credit unions are always a little bit lenient than the traditional banks. So if, if you look at okay. the interest rate, the credit unions always give you lower interest rate. The credit union understands your situation more. It's like a community, it's like a core. You know, the credit unions, mm -hmm. We can ask coming from our own credit union. It's, we can come up together. Oh, okay. From and so they are more lenient when it comes to interest rate and giving money, and and so on and so forth. So it's good to diversify. So our advice is to have a small credit union account on your portfolio as well. That's what I do. So okay. I don't keep everything the tradition. Last process. question. Last question. I know Scotia Bank. Is it true? Okay, I could be wrong. Is it true, Akeshi? Scotia Bank belongs to Nova Scotia and TD and all those home um, uh, uh, provincial banks. Eh? Is it good to also have account with those ones too? It's, do you know anything about that? Yeah, no, it doesn't but, belong to. So, so the first bank in Canada. But I know we have ATB here. We have ATB, which is Alberta some something bank, yes. and then we have to, uh, track Toronto Dominion, which is the TD bank, with all over the yeah. place. It doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make okay. are, are federally. Uh, yeah, they are all federally registered. It doesn't make a difference uh, where they are history and where they came from. No. But sometimes it's always good to diversify. Like I'm saying, you can have a TD bank, uh, you can have um social bank, so that there is something that's what you're trying to uh, 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 look at. There's a relationship aside from the credit and all that, there has to be a relationship between you and the bank as well. So if you have a good relationship with TD, right? That that means that maybe when you go to school here, you started with TD, you have a long history with them. Sometimes they will look at you differently than somebody coming in new. You understand? So the longer mm -hmm. process, I have a good relationship with Scotia Bank. My mortgage is there. My employ when they pay me, my employment goes there. And they have loans with them. You have a good relationship with the relationship manager. You've built over time. That's also key. So okay. going to a new bank, um, you are you'll be looked at as a new person. You know, you know mm -hmm. that's the thing that you need to look at. Okay. Last question, and then uh Jerome, can a visitor or say can a visit visitor holder open account with ten thousand dollars and get a credit card uh, the credit card is not given to you because of the money that you have it's given to you based on credit so when you open a new right. card they will look at you for some time before they give it to you uh, uh, they, this is african african speaking money don't buy money here it is the name it's 
fact, it is the knowing the in the system. Remember everything we talked about. It is how well, how diligent you are. If you owe two dollars, are you paying? I know someone who doesn't have a job, but they had a good credit with big credit limit than I with a job for a long time. Yeah. You know why? Because my credit was bad. And I, I cleared all that. And then uh, now I can step into, I don't even have to go. I don't even want any credit card again. I don't apply. Because when you keep applying, it keeps also taking off a point. Mm -hmm. So I don't apply. But when, when I'm in my house and I open my bank account and I see that you say a pre-approval, this one I took, I take, because you've already, pre you bypass, you've already known my credit. It is within the bank. But it's not with the, I don't need to go and uh, do a hard check. Yes. So these are the they have a relationship with you already. And so they yes. yes. exactly. Yes. exactly. Yes. exactly. So open up the bank, open up the account with the, with big money. I've seen 40 something, 80 something dollars with all these new immigrants coming. You in. still need to build a credibility with the bank. And build your, your, your credit, your relationship with them. Find a job quickly because ten thousand dollars. Find a job quickly. But but maybe maybe he's trying to use the credit card for something. Then you can actually get a secured credit card, like um, you said before. You can put three thousand out of your ten thousand to put on a secured credit card. That man is your own money. That's right. So so that's a different thing. And then after you go over time, they'll increase that limit for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate. Thank you. Thank you. Kobi, did you bring cocoa from your papa's farm? Uh, or you 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 are in Ghana telling them not to come to Canada. Now you are asking you have forty thousand dollars. You have so funny. Women no wash you. Now you want me do no bye bye. So guys, thank you very much. Uh Ni, uh, I hope your question is answered. Ni ni bote. Uh, I hope I can uh, question uh, mm. So everybody who is watching, thank you very much. And thank you, Prof, for coming in. I hope to get you more. We need the money talk. We need to talk more. I want money. You, you, you know me, I want money. So please uh, make time for me uh, on a frequent basis so we can uh, get this thing out there. And I hope all of you, you've shared the video. If you have not shared it, Please share. And um, the information I've, I've posted is how to get uh, a hold of me. I'll put it inside the contact on the heading. See the caption? I'm going to leave his information there. If you are in Canada as a new student, as a refugee, if even if you come here with $10,000, you can still claim re refugee. Whatever you claim, it is your money you are running, obviously. Uh, Kobe, you say call me. Okay. So thank you very much and hope to see you all very, very shortly. And um, I'm sure that we've been able to answer some of your questions for, for you. Thank you. Have you just arrived you. in you. Canada? You. Are you a new immigrant? Did you claim refugee beginning of this year, in the middle of this year? Or are you a student? Find out on this show, what do Canada immigrant? Did you claim refugee because in Canada revenue owes?